Well, I've teamed up with Dr. Utker for Back to School, and um, I know lots of people forget about lunch boxes. Yes. Mm. Um, so these are really nice. They are fruit and veg breakfast bars. I cannot believe these are fruit and veg. Like yeah, I just cannot they wait. Are. I need this transformation and now. And can I just say, as a mother to had, I keep saying a reformed fussy eating child. Like my son ended up in hospital. He was really bad with fussy eating, mm -hmm. um, and. He ate these. Like he's the person I get to taste everything with. So he ate these. He goes, you can't actually taste anything in it. And I'm like, okay, that's good. But he knows everything that goes into it. So um, I have a mix. I, I try to keep it simple of what you generally have at home. Okay. So you don't have to go out buying anything special. Yep. We're all trying to be more conservative. Mindful of, of waste costs. as well. Exactly. Yes, totally. So carrots. I mean, he doesn't have carrots. Most kids eat carrots. So I'd say they're one of the least offensive of the fruit and veg what range. What I do now is a carrot and some hummus. Yeah. 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 Or peanut Lovely. butter I love. Yeah, but I would peanut literally butter just and eat. Carrots. Yeah. Oh, I haven't had that or before. Joe yeah. Wicks recommends apple and peanut butter as a snack. Oh, yes, I love that. Oh, yeah, that's good. But I would just you. eat them and they're all my dad grows carrots and I'm obsessed with them. You're grating that well. So all I can <laughs> say is that um, I'm doing this on the finer part of the grate. Right. Right. I, I can tell you a lot of things about grating. We've had a lot of practice the last month. So I've just peeled the carrot um, and then I'm just grating it on the finer mm. part of the... Um, By the way, this is so handy on the top. Oh, yeah, because the that... amount of times that, like, the graters kind yes. of maybe take your skin so off. Good. They are quite sharp. So uh, just finely grated carrot's going to go in. And then the next, I'm going to do the same finely grated of the courgette. Now, courgettes can be quite wet, but don't worry about that because that's all your nutrients going in. So I haven't peeled this. And you kind of get a little bit of a rhythm when you're grating. Um, you could chop this up. Um, I wouldn't recommend liquidizing because it's just going to turn into a pulp and it's going to mm. get too wet. And I do like to see kids that they can see and they know what they're eating. Um, so there goes the courgette. And then the apple and the pear, I'm not going to peel these because all of the fibre and a lot of the nutrients is right underneath the apple. Now, it does catch in the finer part of it, so I like to use the side so you grate your cheese yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for grating this. Um, and just be mindful you're not going to put any chips in. So the peel has most of the good stuff in that Yeah, oh, and wow. a lot of the fibre. And now, mm. so, I'd, so um, I'm a fussy eating children's feeding therapist. Um, I went over to America a couple of years ago and trained in it from off the back of my son. Amazing. So I've been working with people for like the last six years and a lot of children, a lot of parents come to me and they say, oh, my kids won't eat, peel off apples. And my mm. son was the same. They actually find it really hard to um, to bite and chew the apple because it, it is quite hard. We're used to it. We're older. Mm. We're desensitised to it. But a lot of children aren't. So by grating this, they still see the peel going in. Or if you are putting apple in a lunchbox, a lot of what turns kids off is the fact that it goes brown. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you might combat it by putting a little bit of lime on it. But lime can be very bitter for children yeah. as well. So um, if they really don't like the peel, you know, I, I keep it and I put it in a smoothie. I let my son know that we do eat it again. Mm -hmm. um, but I... I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't fight with them over a little bit of peel, but it's perfect in this and it gets cooked fine. The same with the pear, the peel's going in the pear and then a banana. So bananas, the darker they are, the more natural sugars they have in yep. them. So, so the darker the better? For sweetness, for natural sweetness, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, and for flavour. So and I'm just going to mash this up. Yeah, yep. just a little bit of a mash. Um, I like to have it quite mashed up. And then that's all of the fruit and veg. Now you can change it up a little bit. I haven't used a parsnip, but if you had parsnip home, you could choose a parsnip like instead a, of it seem like a an courgette. Odd ingredient. Yeah, yeah. parsnip. You but you have that kind of sweetness in parsnip yeah. as well, I suppose. Yeah, mm. you would. Um, and just, yeah, nice kind of root veg. Just I wouldn't put a potato in there. That'd be weird. <laughs> So that's the potato. fruit and veg, yeah. Can you read my mind? Irish, yeah. yeah. <laughs> kind of go, okay, save that for potatoes, maybe. Yeah, so yeah. then into that is going to go in... Five minutes um, left. ...plain flour. And then I want these to rise up. Now, they're not going to rise up loads. I want them to rise up a little bit. So I'm putting in some baking powder. Now, I get asked baking questions all the time. So my original DNA was pastry chef, and I would have loved all of the baking before I went and helped the world of fussy eating. But I used to hate when I'd ask people to measure out stuff because some people go, oh yeah, that's a teaspoon and it's not. Or they would use a massive tablespoon. So a teeny teaspoon is what you'd put, you know, stir your tea with. But I always like to make sure it's really level because you, mm. uh, if you put too much in, people think it's going to rise up a little bit more and actually has, a, um, it actually would make it go flatter and you'd oh. get an aftertaste. Then what goes into this next is one egg. And then I've got a little bit of sugar here. You can put in cast sugar, brown sugar. It doesn't actually matter. Whatever you have in the press. Um, and then I've got some 
uh, natural yogurt here. Oh. So I've got Greek yogurt. Yeah. Greek yogurt's much thicker. And um, if you're trying to get kids to eat yogurt and you want to put in, say, your own blend with some honey or maple syrup, I think Greek yogurt is a lot easier for them to pick up and eat because it is thicker, especially when they're like smaller, like toddler or yeah. like like a lot of kids when they're starting school, when they're junior infants, they don't let them use yogurt until after Halloween because it's messy. So Greek yogurt's really, really handy. And then here's a great tip for you. Mm. So anyone that is finished with baby bottles, don't throw them out. I'm just you starting haven't even with started. Them. Oh my god. Because so these were all my daughter's baby they're so bottles. Small and they're expensive. Five ounces. But they're brilliant for weighing out things. So there's That's 100 a mils of oil. Idea. Um, and a lot of people don't know what to do. I keep them and I use these for my measurements and they're really good when you're coming to do live TV because the cap screws on yeah. and they don't risk spilling in your bag because oil great. spilled in the bag I is do. not a good bag. And then I have the vanilla, vanilla paste here. So I love vanilla. So vanilla Ooh. paste. So one teaspoon of this is equivalent to one vanilla pod. So they're like the long pods that yeah. you would scrape and a lot of and people don't have so them. these are so handy, your little measures. Oh, they're so handy. Great gifts for anyone. And, and uh, just don't put these in the dishwasher. So my husband put these in the dishwasher and they rust in the dishwasher. Um, oh. so, Three minutes left. Um, um, and then this is this is why I love this recipe uh, because you can get your children to help you make this. There's no electric mixer needed for it. It is literally just a fork, and all I'm doing is just combining everything, just till it's just about combined. It's and actually then... mixing quite well. All the mm. consistencies are blending together. Yeah, it's great. yeah, and you can get that lovely color in there. And the whole thing with children is like they. There is this philosophy of like sneaking fruit and veg in, which I understand, and that can be good to a point. But what can happen if the children say they eat this and they like it and they don't know what goes into it, then if they see carrot going in, you could actually turn them off this. That goes with yeah. like bolognese mixes that you like sneak stuff in. So it's fine to sneak it in, but I do think you need to come to a point where, you know, after you might kind of go, oh, you know, there's carrot and that just because if they oh, see mommy, this. Oh, mummy, why? I hate carrot, mummy. I hate yeah. you, mummy. And, and then you're going, you've just eaten it. Get uh, over kids. Gotcha. Yeah. So, um, this is great for baking with the kids. And what I do with this is um, I make it in advance and it freezes really, really well. And you get 16 portions out of it. So that goes into a fan 16 oven. 16 portions? 16 yeah. portions, Oh, wow, that's yeah. a lot. So oh. that goes into... Actually, Brian, would you mind spreading that out for me, please? Absolutely. That goes into a fan oven at 170, uh, electric oven for 180. And it takes between 30 and 40 minutes to bake because the fruit's quite moist. It'll keep, it doesn't get, like, dried out, which is lovely. And then once it's baked, here it is. Ooh. And you just flop it over there. First of and all, my work was that good? That's amazing. Thank you so much. Ma like, natural. Thank you'll, you. You'll be all over this Will now. Will I put it in the oven? You, you can put it in the oven. It's not on. But this can be I never know if the oven's on. Yeah, yeah, this can be oven. Yeah. Oh, wow. um, so, yeah, 16 portions um, of this. But I have to show you, like, my favourite decorating trick. So, um, they just get into fing cut into fingers. And if you want to do it, like, really well, just, like, cut in half and then half and half yep. again. Um, so, um, I'm just going to decorate these. So, I would have thought before I had kids, when I had a lot more time on my hands, that I'd melt chocolate, I'd temper it, I'd make my own piping bags, and I was there saying to you know busy parents, it's really easy. Now I have a two-year-old that uh, wrecks my house. So, <laughs> the, the, the thoughts of a homemade piping bag are long past my days, and I have given in to, it's actually quite stressful baking with kids, um, and messy. So I love this. This is like one of my favorite tips, and every time I share it with anyone that bakes with kids, they adore it. So you just get your bag of chocolate chips or chocolate chunks, Dr. Up to ones. You put them in a jug or a mug of hot water, and then you just forget about them, and you leave them there for five or 10 minutes. You snip off the bottom, you're not making a piping bag, and what you have here is an instant decoration of drizzle that now genius that drizzle great. makes everyone excited uh, from my days of being a pastry chef a long time ago working in restaurants like you wouldn't believe the amount of extra money you could charge if there was a drizzle on stuff children love decorating it's fun they this is how you get them into eating it's the first memories of it baking. smells amazing it yeah. does oh you're trying to definitely taste can them. we try one of these yeah yeah go for it. Try it. so um, try it. these are um oh. these are my new favorite decoration so these are all like little chocolate of carrots, so there's carrots in there. So Sadly, it's fun, yeah. I feel like I'm on Ireland Day. Okay, That's well, all the time we have recipe, for tonight. Go on to Dr. Utker Baking Facebook Ireland page or their Instagram page. For thank all you to so our much. guests, and of course, thank you so much, Louise, for feeding us.